I promise myself to never cross the North Sea winter time again to attend the Opelia Viking Festival on Shetland, as this have put me in harm's way more than once on earlier passages. I again managed to put myself in a very bad situation while sitting in Lurvik, Shetland, ready to get back home to Norway, 200 nautical miles away. Another storm developed coming from west. The positive part was that this meant downwind sailing all the way to port in Norway. The more challenging side was that winds were reported to reach gusts of 50 knots, creating building following dangerous waves along the way. Fucking hell! I had very mixed feelings about the situation and was on the brink of cancelling. After a long round of consideration, this was the only way to get back for a very long time. Okay, welcome back to next video. Sailing from Shetland to back to Norway. It's a crazy weather now, it's 30 knots out there and the big waves, but uh, I have a little bit issue to get my boat from the quayside here because the wind is blowing directly into my side and uh, it's impossible almost to, to get out there without scratching the boat on the quayside here. So, those guys over there, that sailboat, the Norwegian guys, they arrived some days before me and uh, I've been hanging around with them and they are going to to try to tow me sideways out from the quayside here now. So that's going to be exciting. So I just have to dress up and get ready, start the engine and uh, take it from there. Ooh. Outside the wind started increasing more and more. It's a frightening and annoying feeling when you start doubting your decisions. If this is smart or plain recklessness. Previous experiences and gathered knowledge over the past years told me that this was within my limits. To take such a decision, you need to have a strong belief in your abilities and of course have a great trust in your boat. My good Shetland friend Leslie met up to help me with my lines. We decided, being two pair of hands, we could manage to get Tessie off the berth if he waited for the wind to take a short drop. The wind let go for a few seconds. We were off. The Norwegian sailing yacht Linda, a Bavaria 46 with three crews, headed out first. Cheers, boy, take care. The wind instantly hit our boats as we entered more open water. Fenders and lines got secured. I could see the low pressure building up around the entrance to the open ocean. Rain squalls and white tops came rushing in. It wasn't hard to tell this journey would start off with a rough beginning. But this was nothing compared to what the weather gods had in store for us. Leslie kept following us with his camera safely from land, while the wind and waves started to really build up. Okay, so we got out from the port and it's now gusting 40 knots. <laughs> it's a bit gnarly here now. I think once we're out of this and we go downwind, uh, we're good. We'll be good. Pounding through the waves, my full engine entering a rather aggressive Bresse sound. 
it was time to confront the inevitable conditions as the building ocean waves started beating on the boat. Pressure from the wind, currents and waves pushed us further and further off the coastline towards the brutal shores. Sailing at Linda was right behind me, still going by engine. Soon rounding the Preste Lighthouse now and we can start to alter our course eastwards, downwind. Jesus! <laughs> I felt uncomfortably close to the Bresse lighthouse for a moment. Eventually, we rounded the corner and came clear of the danger. proceeded to pound our way towards the open ocean with the frightful and unknown conditions of the North Sea breathing down our neck with nowhere to run and hide. Luckily the sponsor of this video Incogni knows how to protect and hide you at least online. When you're doing your regular online shopping, browsing or signing up for different services you often have to enter your personal data like your name, address, telephone number and email. What you might don't know is that data brokers collect this information and sell it to online businesses and advertisers. I experienced the outcome of this myself by annoying phone calls, spam emails and suspicious SMS messages. That's where Uncogni shows its powers. Cleaning up and taking back all your given information is near impossible doing it yourself. I have much better things to do. By signing up with Uncogni, you let them do the work of contacting these data brokers to make them delete your information. I have signed up myself. Within the three first days, 24 companies completed their removal request through the help of Incogni. To stay safer online, please check out incogni.com slash Eric and get an exclusive 60% off an annual Incogni plan. Now let's check out what's going on in the North Sea. We fought our way along the cliff of Bard Head. The sea state increased as we got more and more into open ocean. And I was really wondering what was in store for us when already experienced the chaos going on this close to shore. Last point of land, Bard Head. Straight into the big North Sea again. <laughs> Seven, 35 knots. It was time to notify Shetland Coast Guard about my plans before the going got really tough. I'm going back to Helgesund, Norway. One person on board. Yes, I have uh, EPIRB and uh, life raft, survival suit, uh, satellite communication, uh, and VHF and AIS. Yacht Linda had got some foresail up and was well on their way to pass me. On board Linda, the conditions were rough but stable. They slowly overtook me, and soon I could barely spot them in between the wave tops. And Linda, the other boat, is just over here. I don't know if you can see it on the GoPro, but it's just over there. Oh. Next was to let the hydrogen take over the steering. I was excited to see how it would cope with these conditions.
Meantime, the winds started reaching 40 knots. So Linda is uh, three miles in front of me, but she slowly disappears. She, she is a little bit faster than me. Ah, oh, there she disappeared. Guess I'm alone. Now the waves started to build. downwind so it's, it feels pretty good the waves are already pretty uh, steep and big but I hope as, as we get f further from shore that the, they will be longer not so steep but everything is good seven knots It was a little bit of a freak wave, tossed us a little bit around. So now we have to clean up there. Some more weather than expected. Indeed, the weather gods granted us much more than anticipated. Being 35 nautical miles from the shores of Shetland, this journey had now turned into a one-way ticket, with no turning around. The cabin was a total mess after the freak wave. Cleaning it up takes a lot of energy being tossed around. I could only feel the seasickness build up in my gut. Some fast food yogurt. Sometimes she brooches and gets the waves on her side, filling the cockpit up, breaking over the boat. So this is the safest place to be. So this is a little bit more than uh, I expected. I just saw a possibility and uh, this is the possibility to get home. Staying inside is safe, but it got me more seasick. The only way to solve this problem is to get up on deck to get some fresh air and watch how the boat moves around in the waves. I feel in control of the environment, so uh, I know that it's King Neptune that has the control here, but uh, my mind has accepted the environment and adapted to it. I could only hope the Viking gods would sprinkle some of their magic fairy dust on me as I accepted another of their North Sea challenge. To be honest, I'd much rather do this than chugging beers in a Shetland pub waiting for better weather. This way I learn how to better deal with these conditions, keep a clear head and to test the limits of my beloved Tessie. Seeking comfort in a pub will get you nowhere. I love these little cheese bits, easy energy. Seeing that everything was good kept my motivation on top. I stayed full and hydrated. Alin, that has to have a, have a remain. Hello. And I was surprised to get a short conversation with the captain on sailing yacht Linda. They too had a rough going, but were doing great, considering the conditions. I also sent a message to my family telling them all was okay. But outside the darkness came creeping in. 
one thing is to be bashed around in these violent waves. At least you can see what is happening. Doing this in complete dark for the next 15 hours is another ball game. And seeing the winds peaking over 40 knots as the nightfall occurs for sure gets your head switched on. Another gear off in case I need to pop out there and do something. So I'm just gonna take a rest on the floor here. Oh wow. Tessie had now fought her way almost halfway into the ordeal, and we now had to deal with getting through the busy oil fields. Tessie on uh, zero nine. Yeah, Tessie uh, 09. So the watch ship Esfact Cassiopeia called me to tell me to not go too close to this big old platform here. We soon passing. So they are watching us. That's good. Yes, thank you. I will, I will not go into the 500 for sure. I will. I will try to keep this course. Yes. Sounds good. Uh, thank you very much for cooperation. So battery says 23%. I didn't, I didn't use the Watton Sea now because it was too bad weather for having it in the in the ocean. So I'm just gonna charge with with the engine. Okay, so let's head out for a little bit of a weather and sail check. This is gonna get crazy. light and the cockpit light. Still 35 to 40 knots. Listening to the wind howling and waves breaking around the boat is scary when you're not able to see anything. You just have to put all your trust and belief in the boat. Sail still look good. We are getting pushed a little bit south of our course line, but I think I'm just gonna let it, everything stay as it is. I don't want to get even more downwind, and uh, the sail will start start to flop from side to side. So let's just do this for a while more until we are past the platforms. <sighs> wow! Keeping the boat on course while being pushed in all directions by the big following swells takes a lot of adjusting of the hydrovane and rudder. All right, it's dark, black, and I need to rest and I need to change my clothes because I'm pretty soaked out of this eventful day but the boat is coping really nice I bet we have some tops of six or seven meters now but uh, yeah but they don't break they are long and uh, and uh, tall but they are not the, the really bad breaking ones and the uh, wind is steady on 35 knots I think I have acclimatized my mind to the environments now, so I, I can relax a little bit more and, uh, and take a nap, take, take a little rest. The important thing is to find some kind of peace of mind with the situation and don't be stressed and scared. 
system is not good for anything. Uh, you just have to trust the boat and yourself and the equipment. You don't have any choice. Testing, I will... Okay, let's go out. Yeah, let's put this up. The washboard. First of all, I think I will take the sail in. Oh. We're just sailing on the mast now. So it's 32 knots. Okay, I want to take the wheel over. The other side, like this. Okay, that was a little bit too early. Let's take the hydro end first. So now it's that angle, we want that angle. Like that. Twist her some more to get to Hugo soon. Try with that. There we go, maybe. That's pretty good. Nice and the wheel. And out with the sail. We got it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Freaking huge waves. Wow. Look at that beast. to go. So, we have a nice problem here. They're taking in water somewhere. It might be the waves from the cockpit. Uh, and But it's a lot of diesel in it as well. So that's interesting. And now the sink is full. So, this is getting better and better. They're taking in water and uh, the pump is maybe not working. The other pump is working. There's 
not really much I can do with this now. We'll have to. Wow. Ooh, still 35 knots, 40 knots, all the way from Shetland, and it's tiring. And I have the wind almost from behind, so the boat is rocking around like crazy. So it's not possible to really lie down and rest. We can only sit and uh, hold fast. But it's about 40 Norge miles until we reach uh, land now. Reckon, bro, reckon to, to be in at uh, yeah midnight some sometime. I had one big concern to this passage. With all this wind constantly pushing the ocean waves in one direction eastwards, I feared the waves would only get bigger and bigger as I came closer to the Norwegian coast. Another concern was that I was closing into Norskerenna. This is an underwater fjord stretching along the Norwegian coast. Water depth plunges from 120 to almost 300 meters as you reach the fjord. Then back up to 100 meters as you enter inside the coastline. Strong ocean currents up to 4 knots passes along this system and will build up terrible waves especially during westerly winds. In other words, I was heading straight into the worst case scenario. Oh, there you are, there you are. I was about to find out soon enough with the signs already starting 40 miles off the coast, together with another occurring problem. Next chaos. It's a lot of smoke in the boat now. I think it's from the diesel heater. And I think maybe the line broke for the diesel heater. It's coming out here. So I stopped uh, the heater now. It's really full of smoke in the cabin. Shit. Ah. So let's see after I stopped it. If it gets better. Less than 40 miles to go to land. At this point the ocean waves really started their brutal attacks. It's wild. It's just fucking wild. Wow, 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 wow. Shit. Fucking hell. Oh. And my drainage holes are too small, so the water is coming out pr very slow. So I can't take too many of those waves. We need to get to shore now, for fuck's sake. This is just crazy now. Oh, it's so tiring. So I've started the air fan on the, the bastu now. And ho hopefully it will uh, push the smoke out of the boat. It's pretty bad, so I'm just standing in the companion way. Not to be intoxicated. All right. <laughs> Out to get some fresh air. It's, it's not so nice to be down there with all the smoke, but I think it's slowly getting out of the cabin now. I have the companion way open. So I think we're good. Oops, a line in the ocean here. We don't want that in the propeller. It's like being out in another world with these waves. Oh. It's crazy. Seagulls don't mind. They never mind. That was a big one. So, since I don't have any heater to keep me warm anymore, I'll have to do with some hot water, pasta and sauce. So for everyone wondering how I can have hot water on board, I have an, have an inverter under here. Let's see, take the camera. Under there I have an inverter. And it makes me able to boil water with the 
boil water can or what you can, the, the thing that you boil the water with. Favorite part when you can skid around in this mess. Nice. The evening fell on. The sun disappeared behind the wave tops. And again, I was left alone in the darkness as we entered the feared Norskerenna. And sure enough, my predictions of the building waves was correct. So we got uh, 90 miles to go now to shore. And the waves are building crazy here now. It's, uh, I think it's a lot of currents. It's, we are passing a place called Norskerenna. And wow! And uh, yeah, I just uh, hope we can do this quick <laughs> and get inside. Wave tops are must be up to seven, eight meters on the real big ones. The winds are building to 40 knots. Tops are 46, 47 knots. Uh, feel how the winds disappeared when being in the lowest point between two waves and to again feel the wrath and powers on the tops told me how big these swells really was. The incoming complete darkness was terrifying. All I could hope for was to count on the Viking gods to keep a protective hand over me, Tessie and Tiger for the last remaining hours. Okay, so we are closing into the shoals of Röda now. It's 10, 12 miles to go and it's really scary because it's huge waves around here. I almost got knocked over by one of them. And they are, they are, they are, they are big and now it's complete dark. So I can't see shit, nothing. And, and it's almost better not to see it because then you don't have to be scared when you see them. You can only hear the roar when uh, the waves are crashing behind you. And then you know it's coming. Oh shit! Oh. After 35 hours of this rather harsh treatment, my body and mind started to get fatigued. I had to take a few minutes to sit down and gather energy for the last few miles. So, I finally reached the land and got inside. My god, that was a long ride downwind. And we're still not done, there's still a couple of miles to go, but uh, that's nothing. So now uh, we can see the city lights of Hugesun, and I believe that's a very good sign. But it's still windy, and it's still big waves around me, so we need to uh, pay attention and uh, not lose our focus. Yeah, that's what I mean. Fucking big waves, still. Dangerous. The route in shore, wind and wave conditions were more or less the same as in my video encountering Storm Force 10. So this is what it would look like if we turn on the light. Funny enough, if we turn off the light again, everything seems more calm, but it's not. Wave size could now be measured approximately by counting the amount of seconds the ridge of the wave in front is covering up the city lights of Haugesund. Miles sailing. 
That was absolutely crazy. <laughs> wow. Would I do it again? I, I doubt I would take that one again. That was uh, that was a sketchy ride at uh, times, especially the last hours inside here. That, that those were the worst. So the North Sea has built, has got the build up all all the way from Shetland to to Haugesund. Ooh. But now I'm going to see my mom and her husband. They are greeting me with some homemade pizza, and I can't wait. I think I will see you in the next video soon, right? Stay tuned. Thank you so much. See you later. Hello, oh, welcome, man. And thank you. It was great to come on our land. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, if you want to support my work you can check out my NBJS merchandise. I also have a new design for my upcoming Greenland trip starting in mid-June. I'm really looking forward to that. Fourth attempt, let's go. And thank you to all my patrons, you've been uh, wonderful uh, of supporting me and you can join my Patreon page as well. And also check out my Instagram and Facebook page for news and updates. So in the couple of next videos I had some uh, more equipment to, uh, to show you. This is the new mainsail traveler from Salden and I will also have a really cool new camera from Raymarine with a 30x optic zoom to, to hopefully see some icebergs when I get close to Greenland, uh, if there is any. And also anti-collision system to, to be integrated in my Raymarine system to avoid striking things in the sea or hitting land as we all know I've uh, I know too well now, so, but anyway, I will see you very soon, bye. Also, get your NBJS Burgi by sending me an email to post at nbjs.no. And of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel.